Hello, I'm Robert Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. The Secaser Hyde paintings are an amazing a work of art that tell us a great deal about life in New Mexico in the 1700s. Part work of art, part artifact, and part documentary record, they tell us about a very important and significant expedition that took place uh, from New Mexico, Santa Fe specifically, to what is now Nebraska in 1720. And here's what happened. The expedition is called the Viasur expedition, named after Pedro de Viasur. He was a Spaniard living in uh, what's today northern Mexico, Nueva Vizcaya, who had quite a military career. He's there uh, operating in the late 1600s and early 1700s, but by 1715, more or less, he's in New Mexico and he is the lieutenant governor of this province. In 1720, the governor at that time, Antonio Valverde y Cosío, got word, a rumor, that there were French people bordering on the New Mexico territories just to the east, and he perceived this as a threat to Spanish borders and Spanish sovereignty. So here's what Valverde did. He appointed Viasur to lead a military expedition to explore and to investigate. Viasur brought with him uh, Nuevo Mexicanos, Hispano people, and he also brought native Pueblo warriors and guides to participate in this expedition. So what happened? Well, we'll get to that. But let's talk about the Hyde paintings. These paintings are really fascinating. They're obviously um, works of art that depict historical events. Uh, they can be seen at the New Mexico History Museum in Santa Fe and also at the Albuquerque City Museum. And what they show are um, art styles with uh, flat two-dimensional images that foreshadow our Santero tradition we'll see develop in the 1800s. I'm not sure if there's a connection, but clearly there's some sort of uh, influence that will come to us later on. We're not sure who painted them, although there's uh, the idea that a member of the Giron family may have painted uh, the uh, Segus or Hyde paintings in the late 1720s. But there's also the notion that they may have been painted much later, even in the 1770s, because of the fashions we see and the hairstyles. Also, uh, some of the pigments uh, can't be found in New Mexico. You have to go south to what's now Sonora to find them. So we're not sure exactly when or where or who painted them. But they show um, uh, the expedition to what's now Nebraska, and they uh, reveal uh, that it was a, a catastrophe for the New Mexicans. Um, we see Native American warriors. We see uh, New Mexicans dressed in uh, black flat hats uh, with their arquebuses, their muskets, but also bows and arrows and uh, uh, heavy jackets. They are uh, trying to uh, battle French soldiers and Pawnee Indians who are attacking them with their own arquebuses, muskets, and bows and arrows. And the first to fall, or at least one of the first to fall, was Viasur himself. We see in the painting that he's laid out, and uh, a Frenchman that came from New Mexico, ironically, uh, uh, Jean L'Archiveque, Juan Archiveque, he is tending to Viasur in the painting, but he also falls. He's a common ancestor to a lot of us New Mexicans. And you also see a Native Americans, uh, uh, women and children, hiding in uh, uh, bushes and behind trees, and it just depicts this massacre that takes place uh, in 1720 uh, in what's today Nebraska. Um, this tells us something about New Mexico and the region in the 1700s. A hundred years earlier, in the 1600s, uh, the New Mexican Spanish enterprise was essentially evangelizing and trying to convert the Pueblo people to Catholicism and incorporate uh, this area into the greater Spanish empire. Um, it succeeded, but only to a point, and we know that with the Pueblo revolt, that ended, that was over. 
But the Spanish returned in the 1690s, and that concept of incorporating the Pueblos into the uh, Spanish system continued into the 1700s. But the focus uh, shifted uh, towards the East and protecting New Mexico specifically and Nueva España, what's now Mexico to the South uh, in a more general way, from British and French expansion that was taking place. So we need to keep that in mind that these paintings and that history shows that New Mexico in the 1700s was in a unique position. On the one hand, it was in a constant state of war with Comanche and Apache Navajo and other uh, plains and nomadic peoples. On the other hand, uh, New Mexico also had to fend off uh, European enemies of Spain. Well, I've talked about Genisaros, how within the New Mexico system, they were a buffer uh, between, on the one hand, uh, the Spanish New Mexicans and the Puebloan New Mexicans, and on the other, those warring peoples. But generally, if you think about it, philosophically, the whole province of Nuevo Mexico, New Mexico, was a Genisaro nation, if I could borrow a term, because the whole area was a buffer uh, between expanding British and French interests on the one hand, and then your wealthier and uh, more established Spanish territories to the south. So keep that in mind, New Mexico in the 1700s as a crossroads of native peoples, Spanish peoples, mixed blood peoples, and French and British interests. Now, a word about the French. On the one hand, you had uh, to the east uh, people from Louisiana, people coming down from Canada, uh, French uh, colonists and people of French ancestry. And um, they start to make their way into New Mexico in the mid and late 1700s as trappers and uh, hunters and merchants. So this starts an interesting phase for New Mexico's population. But there were two Frenchmen who settled New Mexico in the 1690s with the names of Jean L'Archiveque and uh, Jacques Grolet. Archiveque was from uh, Bayonne, France, and uh, Grolet was from La Rochelle, France. And they were part of the La Salle expedition that had come from France in 1684 to colonize the Mississippi, uh, what's now Texas area. Well, that went afoul when uh, some of the crew members uh, mutinied and killed LaSalle. Um, we think that Grolet and Archivec were part of that uh, mutiny because they ended up uh, traveling into what's now Texas, kind of uh, repeating uh, the uh, odyssey and journey that Cabeza de Vaca and de Esteban did in the um, 1520s and 1530s. And they went and uh, lived with Native American peoples and eventually were caught in northern New Spain. And as you can imagine, uh, when Spanish soldiers uh, found uh, Grolet and L'Archivec, uh, they took them to Mexico City to interrogate them and ask what the heck uh, a couple of Frenchmen were doing wandering around uh, northern New Spain. They're interrogated and then sent to Spain where they are further interrogated and it's decided that uh, these two guys have seen enough of uh, Nueva España that they can't be allowed to return back to France because they'll be able to tell uh, their uh, French government and military a lot about uh, the Spanish territories in Mexico and uh, North America. So what happens to them? They're sent to Mexico City and they are sentenced to live their life out in Nuevo Mexico, in New Mexico. So when New Mexico is reconquered and recolonized in the 1690s, uh, L'Archivec and Grolet come north and with Vargas, they settle in New Mexico. And it's quite interesting how quick they become uh, Hispanic. Their names become uh, Juan Archiveque and Santiago Gurule. They marry into local uh, Hispano families uh, and they're, they're said to have tattoos all over their faces 
because of the time they spent with Native Americans. But this is uh, just kind of fascinating because we tend to think of just Spanish people and uh, Native American people in New Mexico, and it's more complex than that. And New Mexico's French history reaches back to uh, Fray Marcos de Niza, who explored here in 1539 with Esteban de Moor, the African. He was uh, supposedly from France. So New Mexico also has uh, a deep French history, uh, and it's really solidified with uh, Crole, Gurule, and Archiveque, who are our common ancestors as well. So that's it for now. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time. Hasta pronto. Bye.